Welcome back. Today we got a little bit of a special project which might not be interesting for most of my audience but there is at least one person out there which is interested. I recently sold a few of these um, Agilent um, GPIB cards and I never had an issue with those because I checked them briefly and they all worked. And uh, I got an email from a customer that um, one doesn't work. Uh, apparently the fault was it does address all the instruments and uh, yeah it's not working or whatever. So what we're gonna do today is we check another one, make sure it does address individual instruments and we can send some commands out. That's all I can do with that software right now. Uh, I can't be bothered to do the rest of the setup. I may do that at a later time because I can actually control all my instruments but I'm using a Prologic interface because all this Agile and stuff is so bloated. Um, yeah, I may do a follow-up with uh, a few more details. This today is just to get that card tested and make sure it's working. So what we have here is uh, we've got a Hewlett Packard 6033 systems voltmeter. We got a Marconi 2017 frequency generator and we got a pretty old Hewlett Packard 5340 frequency counter. Um, I have some solar drones as well but they can o I can only set them to talk so I leave them alone for now. Uh, so we're only talking to the power supply, to the Marconi and to the frequency counter. The major thing is can we address it? Is we're going to address this one here. At the moment it's in remote which is fine. This is not addressed and you'll see there is no address light, but you will see what happens if I address it. So what we're going to do, I made myself some notes here. Uh, we're going to address the Marconi, which is address number one. And we asked this device for a center frequency of uh, 144 megahertz. So when I, when I hit the button, far away. When I hit the button, I clicked the wrong button. Okay, let's do that again. Sorry, I didn't hit, I, I didn't send it, I just hit the wrong button. Again, I hit the button and this thing is changing to 144 megahertz. And we can see it on the counter, it really does it. So at the moment the instrument is addressed, this isn't addressed, this isn't addressed either because this is a listen only device. So we're going to address that meter, that uh, power supply now, which is address number 5. Let's get rid of that. Uh, I hit address number 5 and I change the voltage to 10 volts. At the moment our setting is 2 amps at 15 volts, hopefully that's visible. And I send the command to this device to change to 10 volts 1 amp. We can see the addressing has, been, has gone on the other one, because if you look here we can see we are now on instrument number five, address number five. I have not pressed the button, but as soon as I do it, this goes to listen mode. Sorry, I had a typo here. You see in the history the V is missing. It's volt V said it's for voltage, and I said it's for amperage. So. This is in listen mode because we addressed it. There is no addressing here, no addressing here. And I hit the button. Hopefully it works this time. And we're changing 10 volts and 1 amp. So we are in listening. I address number 1. 
and we can see we come out of listen mode and I just ask we now address one which is the Marconi and I just ask for another frequency make that 433 uh, set so the command to change the frequency on the Marconi is exactly that we we had we disaddressed it because we addressed to that one as soon as I hit the button we can see we are in remote here is the address so the device is addressed so now we are addressing the counter which is a bit of a pain because that counter isn't doing really anything uh, that's address number four so we select address number four and all we do is actually asking for a I think it's an O so it's just an O command and then I think it goes goes connected see it's doing weird things because the settings are not correct but at least it's addressing it this isn't addressed anymore this isn't addressed anymore it's not listening but uh, we can see remote here and everything is locked because it's uh, that's what it is so if I I send an N command, it goes back to normal and it's uh, released basically. That's all of, that counter can't do anymore. So now I'm going to address my power supply again. That's address number five. And this time we ask for 13 volts and 15 amps. As soon as I send that, providing the syntax is correct, so we are not, not drawing any amps, so the settings is 15 amps at 13 volts, and that's exactly what I sent to it. We are in listening mode, so it's actually doing something, and again back to the Marconi, uh, sorry I hit the keyboard with a with tripod here, so let's go back to the Marconi. Uh, and we ask for a send a frequency of uh, 28 megahertz that's what I'm asking for 28 megahertz as soon as I hit the button it gets addressed and does 28 megahertz and that's exactly what we're doing the counter reads exactly that so I think that proves the card is working uh, again, there is not much more I can really do on the fly here because otherwise I'm spending hours here. Um, I'm not. I'm not normally using this software. I'm using something else, but at the moment, it's everything is set up for the Prologix interfaces, which are those here, and uh, I don't want to disturb that really. Here we got another important bit, it's the serial number, it's Mike Yankee 4838402. That's the serial number of the card which has been tested and uh, which goes to the bus tomorrow. There's one more thing we can actually prove, which is at the moment we have address the Marconi, which is address number one. These are addresses number two and three. And uh, there is some glare here, can't really see. Yeah. Better. Sorry, I need to grab the mouse. So, if I talk to the Marconi, you can hear if, if it's uh, winding the frequency up. You can see the solitrons are not addressed. This one is still addressed. And let's do the power supply again, which is this one. And uh, make that 15 volt. So I hit the button. 
I can't show it at the same time. But no addressing here. Look, it's service request, listen, talk. No request. This has been this, this addressed. There's no addressing here. But this is in listen now. So, don't know what else to show. We can see what we've sent here on the diagnostic page. Oh, we finally got that solar phone meter to read again. I must have screwed something up when I changed the card. Because uh, it didn't like it. Now it's working. So obviously that's the raw values coming back from the meter. Uh, I can hook that up and make that 12 volts or so. Bear with me a second, I'm just going to prepare the uh, power supply. Okay, we got it now. Um, power supply is 5. So we're going to send a 10 volt command to the power supply. You can see here it's a 10 volts 1 amp. So we now we go back to our uh, voltmeter for DC voltage and uh, we get it takes a bit the meter is pretty slow to respond but only with that now we get about 0.99 e plus 1 that's uh, 10 volts that's what we're getting the string is very long so that's the reason why it takes a bit to display in here. So that's all working. Um, as I had it working before and I decided that's a bit too slow so I used the poor logics with my own code. Anyway, that's the proof that the solitrons are reading as well. I can try the other one. We should read minus 4.3 about That's that one, ABC, and uh, that's number three, we addressed number three, and years later, that's uh, minus 4.3, 4.4, that's what it's reading at the moment. It's open input, so it's just grabbing up some noise. Anyway, I think that's enough. I'm pretty sure that card is perfectly fine. We showed the serial number before, so we pulled the card out. And that's our power supply. And that's what the meter is reading. It's about 7 microvolts out. I can live with that. And the top one is the minus 4.5. It's just an open input, so it's picking up some noise. Alright, the others are on. They're not addressed. So I got some more HPIB devices but uh, they're not actually hooked up. Normally I use, the reason why I put all this cable work here is that's that's the way it shouldn't be done but uh, I had to hook this up because I use independent ProLogic adapters for these meters. I only used it for a short time with these, um, with these cards because it's, uh, it's just so bloated. And the ProLogics are a lot more flexible with the USB ports and things like that. They're not as reliable as the Agilent or National Instrument cards, but yeah, you get what you pay for. Anyway, another thing we can actually prove, I hope that's fairly visible here, let's just go a bit closer. <coughs> if I pull the plug of the two Solotrons, when I do a refresh, we can see when I pull all the plugs, sorry, that was too much. So I just disconnected the whole bus and uh, we'll get a whole bunch of errors, obviously, because no device is found. So let's do that again and it should find any except 2 and 3 because they're disconnected. It's this cable which goes up to the two voltmeters and 
obviously they disconnect it. So I reconnect that and refresh it and they should come back to life. So the address determination works. Um, ID string does not work on all these instruments because these old instruments do not provide an ID string. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. That's how it is. Um, hope that's all visible. And uh, yeah, not much more to say. I think it works because the addressing was the main concern. Um, he said when he's addressing a single instrument, he's addressing all the instruments. Uh, we can clearly prove it doesn't do that. So it's either a driver problem or uh, whatever. Uh, by the way, this is Windows XP Service Pack 3. Uh, the driver version here is 16.01.4518.0. Um, uh, it's pretty old, but that's the drivers I have here, and I know they're working. Um, apparently, he's using Windows 7 or Windows 10, I don't know. I have no idea if that works. I have no machine where I can test that, because I try to avoid Windows 7 as much as I can. Alright, um, anyway, I think that was the proof of the pudding. That card goes into the post, and... Uh, he can try it and if it works the other card is faulty if not the problem is the setup which is quite likely this uh, GPIB stuff can be a challenge at some point um, it took me a while to understand how it works and how everything works together but uh, I usually get it to work and uh, the challenge is that some instruments are not doing what you want. Uh, I got a few more and I have big problems with, with one of those, which is this uh, uh, 1250 frequency response analyzer from Solotron. Um, I got a manual. It does somehow work, but I'm not entirely happy with it. Uh, I think I used a serial interface, which makes my life a lot easier. Because I got an application here where I basically uh, got a bunch of instruments and I just select my instrument and type type in whatever I want. Uh, I can address other instruments. Uh, that's enough to me, and that uh, I can log some data. That's uh, that's all I need. All right. I'm not saying the other card works, but if this one doesn't work, we know it's a setup problem. And uh, if you send me the other card back, I'll do the same test on the other card. And if that works, we have 100% confirmed it's a setup problem. Hope that's uh, enough proof that the card is working. I'll put it in the post tomorrow. And. Uh, then we'll stay in touch. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, until next time.